Now this probably won't be one of my best videos. This is kind of an early morning video. I don't like doing morning videos. Brain really isn't running. Um, so it's a, basically a follow-up to the Nature Sucks video and uh, the couple of the comments. And generally the comments were pretty good. And so I'm, I'm not displeased that you know people didn't you know run in horror at what I said. Um, and the same characters are basically the ones, no, I'm not calling you characters as an insult, I respect your intelligence, you're all intelligent people, um, but I just mean that the argument is ongoing, um, we just somehow are just can't get on the same page, and uh, so we're always going to see these things very differently. Um, so I'll just get to Matt's, you know, Matt just basically made the point, the philosophy of anger, um, you know, you can't really judge the the story by the person telling the story uh, you know so I have emotion on these issues because I I perceive the romantic glorification of nature as as a religion I mean as a as a as something similar and so obviously you're getting the wrath of my anger at religion and what it's done to the human race is built into my commentary on people who um, glorify nature. Um, so yeah, that, you just can't take that, you know, like I said, the fact that I tell the story with some passion and emotion doesn't have anything to do with the credibility of the story. Um, so getting to the, the meat of it here, it's, it's really back to the whole idea of an objective perspective and and applying any kind of value judgment and someone I argue um, you know this Perot guy that uh, you know there's no such thing as objective that it really doesn't exist in any significant reality that um, it's all a subjective opinion and uh, almost that we cannot there's no capacity to make an objective perspective. There's no, there's no capacity to, to create one, and even if you have one, um, that somehow judgment is impossible. Um, and yeah, I just fundamentally disagree. I, I don't see any reason why we can't suppress our subjective opinions. Um, we can judge the character of people without being influenced by the fact that oh I don't like fat people or I don't like this or I don't like that we, we can do that um, we can step beyond our personal drives desires needs preferences prejudices and um, make quality judgments and so in analyzing life on earth that's all I'm asking people to do is, is make a qualitative judgment about the efficiency of this machine, this device, this creation, this the idea of feeling organisms feeding on each other um, and non-feeling organisms feeding on those feeling organisms really too, it's a part of the equation. Um, the chaos of life, the, the um, yeah, and that there's this equation out there. I've, I've made this point before that I think most pleasure isn't really pleasure. It is the relief of pain, and or the relief of tension, the relief of a negative that's built into us. This need, this drive, this desire, this deprivation, this sense of deprivation that's built into us. And pleasure is merely the release of the deprivation, the absence of the nag, the absence of the tension, the absence of the weight, the gravity. And we, you know, pleasure is the freedom to, 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 you know, to enjoy the release of that weight. Um, so anyway, um, and so this all, oh, I had a really good point. I just lost it. See, that's the danger of morning videos. Um, I guess what I'm getting to is that, um, you know, there's no, there is really no positive. There is just the elimination of negative. And um, so the system is running in deficit. It just can't run any other way because it's need dependent and it has to create the need first and the need is the negative. And uh, that might be a little going too far for some people and that's okay. Um, but the bottom line is, is I think most people can't appreciate. I mean, we've all sampled what life offers. We've, we know what pain and pleasure are. 
and we see it in varying amounts in how life lives. And um, most life, 99.99% of it, doesn't have this qualitative experience that we get of being able to contemplate any of this. It's just driven by the need, um, driven by the passions constantly. And, uh, you know, most of that life is not, it's not good. It's hard out there in the real world, out in the jungle. Every day is a fight, a struggle. Um, you know, yeah, there's good days and bad days. Uh, you know, just a little quick story. I mean, something always stuck in my mind. You know, these, most of the nature shows in the past, especially my childhood, were just silly. I mean, it was all Winnie the Pooh kind of stuff, you know, and Walt Disney did shows, and, you know, the bears would break into the cabin, and they'd eat the honey and get the jar stuck in their nose. It was all very funny, ha, ha, ha. But it didn't have much to do with reality. And uh, they've sort of gone the opposite way now, where it's all about the claws and the teeth and the blood. Um, but anyway, at least they are a little more realistic in portraying the life of animals. And uh, there was one show on lions, and, you know, I like lions. And, uh, you know, there was this beautiful lion. He's having a nice life for four years. He was the king of the pride, the whole thing. And then, you know, a couple of lions, a couple of twin brothers, booted him out as the, the master. And, uh, you know, so for the next couple of years, his life went to ruin. I mean, all he was was a scavenger to the, to the pride. I mean, just... He, he, you know, just hung out on the outside. He didn't, he didn't get to participate, you know, no food, no sex, no anything, just picking up the scraps. And he just slowly deteriorated. I mean, he just lost weight, and his tail got eaten off by parasites, and they have this, you know, horrifically beautiful, you know, final scene in his life, you know, where he's barely able to walk on this dry desert, and, and the sun is setting, and, you know, he's got no tail, and the flies are harassing him and he's just struggling, just saying, okay, I'm alive, I'm still alive, I'm still alive, and he's still walking, and, uh, and all of a sudden he just falls over, and it's just this, uh, it's, it's just so sad and, and so um, brutal that this is the indignity that that proud and, and you know, a strong animal is subjected to and, and life does that to all of us most of us and um, I just don't you know like I said you don't okay I mean we want to have an objective conversation I don't know what I'm saying is, is any objective intelligence is going to be able to understand that image understand that message it's going to it's not going to sit there and be entertained by it it's not you know it's not going to say in the calculation Ah, that makes perfectly good sense. Brilliant idea. That's like a, the most efficient machine on earth, this, this life engine, that it creates magnificent moments like that. That's not going to be the conclusion. An objective intelligence from an objective perspective is going to conclude that life is horribly messy. The system is broken. I mean, there's no way to look at nature and, uh, and see anything other than that reality. Uh, I don't think. Um, it's part of the design. It's the whole design. So yeah, I think there is an objective perspective. I think it can be constructed with our intelligence. We're capable of stepping out of ourselves enough to make these judgments. We, we do it every day. We, we have our own preferences and prejudices that we don't act on because we know we shouldn't. Because we know they're unfair. And so we can take the bias out of ourselves and we can look at things. And I think we can look at nature and make some determinations and make some judgments. And so I'm just saying that, that that it's, it's something that's got to be done. And, and, and see, the part of what I guess is really irritating me is that what's happening here, by glorifying nature, it's almost like somebody glorifying hell to make purgatory look super great. You know, I mean, you know, if you can make hell look good, well, then purgatory is going to look magnificent. And so we've, you know, we've got it better than most of the animals. We've got the advantages of civilization. And, um, you know, and that's really what's on trial, is our civilization in the end, because that's the only thing we really can control in a substantial way. And so we can, you know, if we can point to nature and say, look, we're better than that. Well, you know, and as long as that means something, as long as that is an absolute horror, then all of a sudden we've made ourselves look good. And uh, so, so that's, you know, we're, we're just making ourselves the better evil by making the evil less evil, you know, the relative evil. And uh, so that's really the key objection, I guess, is that it's just a, an excuse uh, to, to, to make excuses. Like I say, everything becomes, I've said in other videos, all this shit that's going on, all the bullshit that we keep saying is horrible, it's, uh, yeah, we all make it acceptable, we accept it. We do accept this as the terms and the conditions under which life will live, human life. And, 
it's acceptable because we find excuses for it. It's okay, the broken leg is okay because it's not two broken legs. And that's the way we make our comparisons because we keep defending life because you know, that's, that is the subjective, selfish and um, natural almost compulsion um, because we're not stepping far enough outside of <clears throat> the natural mold. Um, we're still being driven to live um, indirectly. We're still running from death indirectly and, and not by wisdom or knowledge but by compulsion, by natural design. And uh, so we're corrupted by the Creator, and therefore we won't allow ourselves to judge the Creator. Or at least we're not judging Him by a proper standard.